Now I understand that I'm very late to this. Okay, well, a lot less late than usual. But apparently the season 9 patch notes have been leaked for Overwatch 2. And there's been a lot of hustle and bustle around on Twitter about it. Now in terms of the specifics of those leaked patch notes, that I'm not sure. So I'm really gonna come into this with no idea or almost no idea of what's going to happen and what's been said in these leaks and what are the alleged changes for season 9. Now obvious disclaimer, these are just leaks. Leaks can be easily fabricated and there's no way to know if this is actually a legitimate source of the season 9 patch notes. This could have just been something cooked by a 4chan user for all we know. I'm gonna approach it like their actual patch notes though, most likely, but take it with a grain of salt though because it's probably not right or real. I just flew through like the patch notes and there seems to be a super amount of changes in here. Now, obviously I'm not gonna look at every single detail and bit of it, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm just gonna read the ones that seem interesting to me. And obviously we're gonna look through the hero ones, obviously. Most damage dealing projectile sizes have been increased, allowing all heroes to hit their targets more easily. Okay, so it seems like the projectile uh, sizes of a lot of heroes have been buffed. Soldier 76's Pulse Rifle, Cassidy's Peacemaker, Roadhog's Scrap Gun, Ramatra's Void Accelerator, and Hanzo's Storm Arrow has been increase so the projectiles actually travel faster which is very interesting I, I don't know why not only do they travel faster but their projectile hitbox is like bigger now so it may be easier to hit your shots which is very interesting I don't know why they would make that change just gives more powers to hit scans but, uh, let them cook I guess because I mean this is a huge patch note so I'm sure like what we're gonna see next is gonna be like yeah this is why they make these changes health full update the total hero health for all heroes including health armor and shields are increased from around 50 15 to 20 percent holy smokes dude everyone and i mean everyone has a huge buff to health now holy including armor and shields jesus christ dude now that is a very very huge change and i'm pretty sure it has something to do with the self-healing all hero ultimate costs are increased by 10 percent oh 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 okay okay um you're kind of losing me, but yeah, keep going. All right, now we're moving on to the roles. Okay, it seems like almost everyone, you know, got a buff. Seems like Diva's alt got a buff. Her alt's basically the range of the radius range from it has been extended, and the max damage has been increased from 900 to 1000, which is like cool. I think a lot of people know how to kind of play around Diva's alt. I think the alt is like easily avoidable as well, and there's not a lot of maps that give the alt opportunity to like shine, to be honest with you. So yeah, more power to diva really Moonfist rocket punch max impact damage increased from 50 to 75 max wall slam damage increased from 30 to 40 now, obviously a w buff i would say you know doomfist is like a decent hero and in a way i want to say that we've all kind of looked at doomfists incorrectly like i would say that you know overwatch community has always complained that you know it's so hard to get a kill with doomfist that we let that overshadow what other things that doomfist could do like doomfist cc ability is insane his ability to create create space even to just sabotage the other team by pushing you know either tank or another person deeper into your back lines is actually pretty impressive yeah like i said i mean this is still a pretty good change it does sound overpowered but with the compensation of everyone else's you know both going up by like 15 to 20 percent i think honestly this doesn't really change anything yeah for tanks it really just looks like they did buffs just to really compensate for the overall increased health pool really except for zarya with zarya they increased her fire beam with from zero 0.15 to 0 0.2 and you know that's cool now we're moving on to damage roll passive change reload speed bonus on elimination removed oh new roll passive dealing damage reduces health received by 20 percent for two seconds that is very very interesting so if you're being super aggressive as a dps like for two seconds that you know you're shooting someone or like engaging in combat the health you receive is you know deducted by 20 percent for two seconds i'm very interested to know why they went about it like this because let's say like you're with genji right and you're in like an open part of the map you know supports can see you and heal you while you're you know flanking or something that just means that you have a bigger chance to get deleted unless wait hold on i think i'm looking at the passive wrong basically the person that you deal damage to receives less healing for two seconds is that how it works it doesn't really clarify but if it works in the way that like yo this person that i'm dealing damage to receives less healing for two seconds then cool i think that's very interesting to experiment with you know it prevents a lot of pockets it really nerfs the power of pocketing in that case you know if you have a mercy pocket on like if this one mercy has been pocketing this one soldier for the entire game and the soldiers you know cooking the entire lobby or even just a bastion i think bastion's a better example 
in this case. It gives the opportunity to be like, okay, you may be getting pocketed, but if we get two of the two of the DPS to focus on the Bastion in that two seconds, he could be deleted now. Okay, I think this is really interesting. I almost want to say I like it as well, but I don't know how it works. If it's the second way, then I do like it. If it's the first way, it doesn't really make any sense. It just encourages DPS to not do damage, which is kind of stupid. God, the impossible has been made possible. Genji's swing recovery was decreased from 0.9 to 0.7, meaning that during his ult, he actually swings faster. I mean, I think everyone knows that, you know, Dragon Blade, as an ult, it's quite underpowered. Don't get me wrong, there is definitely a skill ceiling to, you know, Genji. There's certain techs that you have to know to be able to secure kills, because he's not your typical just look and shoot hero. But with Overwatch 2, he's definitely been underpowered, and especially his ults as well. Like, as a Genji, if you're, you know, doing Dragon Blade, you're gonna need an Ananano in order to be able to, like, secure the kill in, like, I think it's two hits or something like that. So this is great, but I also think this is just a compensation for, you know, for everyone's health being increased, so I don't think this really changes much. Could be that, or it could be a good thing overall. Hanzo Storm Arrow's cooldown reduced from 10 to 8 seconds. Storm Arrow's is pretty good. I wouldn't say anything about Hanzo in particular is overpowered. He's a hero that has a big damage potential, his Storm Arrow's being one of that. I think this just gives him more of that potential with Storm Arrow's, and his base damage increased from 65 to 75, hopefully in compensation. I think that change is cool, I don't think it was necessarily something that needed to be, to be tweaked, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, why is Farah's one so long? Oh, this reminds me, my friend was saying that, yo, Farah was getting like a whole rework or soft rework, something like that. Health increase from 200 to 250. I hate this change already. Before I continue, I think it's very important for everyone in this video to know that I hate this bit. If you're in quick play and you play Farah when you start losing, or you play Farah from the get-go of the game, f*** you. Rocket launcher's self-damage percentage decreased from 50% to 25%, recovery reduced from 0.85 to 0.8 seconds, projectile speed increased from 35 to 40. So her rocket launchers have gotten an overall net buff. She moves faster in the air. Okay, that's exactly what we needed. Apparently she has a new ability called Jet Dash. A horizontal dash in the direction you're moving it has a 10 second cooldown and is bound to secondary fire by default. So now she has more horizontal movement in terms of her other ability called Concussive Blast. Okay, exactly what we needed. Exactly what we needed. Jet is 20% weaker, cooldown increased from 10 to 14 seconds, Christ, and gives 50% of your fuel back now. Okay, so an overall net nerf for jump jets. I guess it's in compensation for the new horizontal movement that she has now. Concussive Blast. 25% weaker horizontal knockback. Range increase from 8. Range decrease from 8 to 5 meters. Cooldown decrease from 8 to 5 meters. What? <laughs> Cooldown decrease from 8 to 5 meters? That's why I say take these patch notes with a grain of salt because this just sounds like something that someone wanted to make before Season 9 started. Incursive Blast now deals 30 damage. Why does it deal damage? It, do it doesn't need to deal damage, but Okay. Rocket Barrage. Now instantly reloads Rocket Launcher. Okay. Now shows the spread of the barrage when the show accuracy option is enabled on your crossing. Okay. That's a nice quality of life update, I guess. Hover Jets. This is her default flying theme of Bob. You'll decrease by 20%. Speed boost increased by 100%. Okay. She rises from the ground faster. That gives you better aerial maneuverability. God damn, I said that word so nicely. No longer refuels in the air. Only re refuel once you like. Oh my god. God is good. God is good. Fuel can now increase to 200% capacity if filled from jump jet and jet dash. Can be used without fuel to slow your descent. Okay. Uh, okay, I like this one. The last one. Even though I really hate this bit, I like this last one. People, people complain about, you know, Farah being hard to hit in the air, you know, the lower metal ranks. But then people in top 500 complain that Farah's, you know, too punishable like you really can't do anything you cannot you can't climb with farah you know now, i personally would have loved you know to have her you know damage nerf but you know this is good i guess her being in the air doesn't seem to be the meta anymore which is great it sounds like there's a much higher skill ceiling with her now given the new ability and you know how it works with the fuel capacity fuel doesn't refuel in the air only once you land you know all of these changes i like it maybe she might be a more balanced character i mean but overall i just would have removed her from season 9. That would have what I would mean personally. Thank god I'm not on the dev team, right? Now the role I'm super duper interested in. The most anticipated role for me. Support. Role passive changed. Regenerative passive now reduces the delay before regain begins by 
Ah, so basically after 2.5 seconds it starts now. That's a buff that supports really don't need in my opinion. It, no, I don't like this change at all. You know, that's just an hour change. Ooh, Kiriko's Kanai base projectile size reduced from 0.18 to 0.15. Which means you have to be a lot more precise with your Kanai shots, you know, to get those well-deserved headshots. Okay, whoa, Lucio's got a bunch of stuff going on here. Sound wave, damage increased from 25 to 35. Knockback increased by 12% and movement lockout duration increased from 0.3 to 0.45. So they basically buffed his boop ability. You know, Lucio players are, you know, happy about this, obviously. And you cannot move for, Jesus, sir, almost half a second. Well, knockback's only been increased by 12%. It may be just a minor change, but I'm very interested to see how this plays out, you know. Lucio players usually use this just for booping purposes. Mercy, Guardian Angel, active duration on jump and crouch bonus movement cancellation reduced from 1.5 to 1 second and sympathetic recovery health recovered from healing dealt increased from 25 to 40 percent now this ga1 i know that mercy players are so happy about this one for sure this basically means that mercy players can just move quick and can do like the whole flying thing much faster now and I know that Mercy players are happy about that, or at least they have to. Now, I forgot how Sympathetic Recovery works, so I, I don't really know what this means here. When they say health recovered from healing does increase from 25% to 40%. Is it health recovered, you know, for Mercy? Because I'm pretty sure that they removed that passive and replaced it with Sympathetic Recovery. So I may be wrong about that. And that is the patch note. Like, I really could have just went through every single hero, but every single hero's HP just got buffed. And if it wasn't their HP, it was their projectile size. Anyways, what do I think about this? This is absolutely hot garbage. I'll tell you why. I'm seeing a lot of health buffs, but no way in these alleged leaked patch notes does it mention self-healing for the specific roles. And on top of all these health buffs, they didn't nerf healing at all. At least at the source that I'm looking at right now, there's nothing mentioning any nerfs of healing, which was what I anticipated coming into these patch notes, you know, because there's, you can clearly see that there's a whole HP revamp. Each and every single hero Hero's health has been buffed by a lot, yet there is, you know, no nerfs to healing apparently. So if this is real, then Overwatch is actually over. It's gonna be a game of things that are basically hard to kill, because not only have you given more people buffs with their health, you haven't nerfed healing at all. So these people will stay alive for even longer now. They're gonna be forced to be playing Bastion, Discord Zen, Damage Boosted Bastion, just so the team fight won't be dragged out. And on top of that, the support passive has been buffed by quite a bit. You really need to understand how the regenerative passive now being reduced by 2.5 seconds instead of 5 seconds is powerful. You basically have to hard commit to supports once you start shooting at them. And on top of that, sub supports have their own type of healing. An E, Kiriko Cleanse, Yari's Pylon. Now I think another important question needs to be asked. Do I think that these patch notes are real? No. I don't think they are. Listen, as much as we may roast Overwatch about how terrible some of their patch notes are, this is just ridiculous. And on top of that, that other spelling mistake or, you know, kind of mistake with the patch notes that I noticed before kind of gave it away. And if it is real, oh my god, there's a lot more to work on here. Like I said, I don't think it's real, but if it's real and you know, maybe, you know, this was a draft for the patch notes type of thing, then it's like, okay, cool, you're going in the right direction, but please massively nerf healing and reconsider that support change. You know, best case scenario, if it is real, let's just hope that, you know, this is just simply a rough draft for the patch notes that people were testing out. And it's like an old draft from like a few weeks ago, you know what I mean? It's the thing, I don't have an issue with everyone's health being increased, right? But if we're gonna get the self healing role for every other hero, then we need to nerf healing. Because if you put healing on a scale right now, let's say it's on a 10, you know, with the health increase, so just basically make killing an enemy just a very tedious task. Yes, a lot of the damage for each of the heroes has been buffed to compensate for that, but I thought it was being buffed to compensate for the self-healing aspect of things that was going to come. If there's two weeks before the season comes out, maybe we'll hear an announcement, you know, but I'm just hoping that this isn't like a final draft for what's coming to season nine, because if it is, this may be just as worse as double shields for the last four years of Overwatch 1. And yeah, I think that's all I got to say. So if you have enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like. That'd be greatly appreciated if you do want to of course and also if you're going to check out my other videos or past streams or whatever the case may be then please do subscribe that'd be greatly appreciated if you do want to of course what did you think about what i said do you agree with me do you disagree with me why do you agree or disagree with me what do you think of these patch notes did they cook did they not cook do you think it's real do you think it's fake oh school today let me know anything down in the comments below and you know what it is guys peace